they get their executions now better, faster, cheaper than ever before. My experiences in financial services and in high-frequency trading told me that wasn't true. So who is right? High-speed trading is a hot topic and a huge moneymaker. Roughly half of all trading is done by high-speed trading firms. So is it a good thing for the markets or a bad thing for society? How does it help? Who gets burned? We decided to start at Citadel, one of the largest market makers and high-speed trading firms in the country. This business appears to be lucrative for Citadel. Its founder and CEO, Kenneth Griffin, made $900 million last year, according to Institutional Investor. Here, in their Chicago offices, they say they execute 14% of all stocks traded in the United States. How? They are not making trading decisions. Those are all made by the computers. Essentially, they pay to see the orders that you make online first and decide whether or not to take the other side of that trade. If the algorithm likes the price, they play ball. If it doesn't, Citadel passes the trade on to an exchange. Get ready to start trading on a streamlined, easy-to-use web-based platform. Can you promise customers of TD Ameritrade that they're getting the absolute best price? Yes. We will always give the best available price on the market or better. 80% of the time, we give our clients a better price than the national best bidder offer. By law, Citadel must match the best bidder offer in a public exchange, but about a third of equity trades take place outside of public exchanges. Citadel doesn't have to match those. So while the retail trader will get the best price in the market, there's nothing to show that that is an accurate price. David Lauer worked at Citadel, where he was laid off in 2009, and then worked at other trading firms before deciding the practices were flawed. He has testified before Congress on the dangers of high-speed trading. The market exists for two reasons. The first reason is price discovery, and the second is capital formation. That's it. The market is not there to be a casino for math geniuses. The price discovery mechanism breaks down when too much of the incoming orders are executed outside of the normal exchange system. And there have been several studies that have demonstrated that at the 40% mark, it acts as a disincentive for people to post orders on the marketplace. We are right at the 40% threshold now for volume that is happening off exchange. I can say to my customers, you're getting the best available bidder price out there. But if there's someone that's willing to pay more and they're not telling us and they're not posting on an exchange, you know, that's just, I mean, that's just how the market works. Part of that is these pay for order flow arrangements that retailers have with wholesalers. Market makers stop posting orders on the lit market. Other countries have recognized this problem, Canada especially. Recently they passed what's called the trade at rule, which imposes a burden if you're going to execute off exchange. And that has driven dark volume down to around 2 to 3 percent of the Canadian markets. Um, now some will argue that's a bit extreme, and it might be, but 40 percent is another extreme and we are doing more harm than good when we're at that level. The major exchanges over the last uh, 10 or 15 years have lost a lot of market share. 80% of all New York Stock Exchange stocks used to be traded on the New York Stock Exchange floor. Now that number is 11%. Unfortunately, the exchanges are reacting to loss of market share by trying to get the regulators to protect their business model. We're not very supportive of that. Citadel also argues they are bringing high-speed trading technology to the masses. I think the automation of the markets has resulted in a much better outcome for average, everyday retail investors. We have state-of-the-art technology and infrastructure and one of the fastest trading systems around. Any retail client order that gets executed through us is trading on a level playing field with the best high-frequency traders out there you can reap some of the benefits of high-speed trading systems, but it's a very questionable claim. As soon as you've you know, looked at something and clicked, or typed in something and clicked, the benefits don't accrue to you because you've already taken hundreds of milliseconds to take an action, and that's just an eternity in the world of high-frequency trading. When I was sitting on a high-frequency trading desk, and the guy next to me had a PhD in bioinformatics, the guy on the other side had a PhD in climate science from Harvard. The guy behind me designed semiconductors for Intel, and another guy had a master's in math from MIT. 
and these guys are all working on an HFT desk. You could have had someone looking for a cure for cancer, someone helping address the issues of global warming, another one leading advances in semiconductor design and technology, and yet here they are trying to find their fortune on Wall Street. You used to have literally thousands and thousands of traders that do the job that our couple dozen people do every day. I don't believe that's true because not every person on the New York Stock Exchange trading floor was a PhD in climate science from Harvard. Uh, yet everyone at these HFT firms are the best of the best. Maureen Farrell, CNN Money, Chicago.